So I was making a tube change on this Marshall JCM 900. Uh, this is the 5881 series that has, uh, it's 100 watt, has the 5881 power tubes and three 12 AX7s. And I realized that there's not a lot of great videos online that show detailed information on how to uh, bias this Marshall. And uh, it can be intimidating. Uh, it's kind of scary messing around inside your amp. And if you do not feel comfortable with electronics or doing your own amp uh, repairs, uh, even kind of basic stuff like biasing, take it to a tech. It's better to be safe than sorry. Um, you're going to read that the voltages can kill you. It can hurt you seriously. And all of this is 100% true. However, if you know what not to mess with, if you, if you know some simple safety procedures, you'll be just fine. And it's satisfying being able to bias your own tubes. That'll allow you to try different tubes and uh, feel comfortable making sure um, that the bias is correct and, and have your amp sound pretty awesome. Um, so I switched out the 5881 tubes with uh, the TAD 6L6GC-ST are the tubes, the power tubes that I'm using here. I have a match quad. I uh, bought these tubes from the tubestore.com. Uh, it's my favorite place to get tubes. You can search by uh, amp model and find recommended packages uh, for just about any amp you can think of. And if you email those guys, they're quite awesome with asking, uh, answering your questions if you have like, uh, if you want some other suggestions of combinations and things like that. Um, and I've never had bad tubes from them, never had bad service. So their recommended package on their website is four of the TAD 6L6 GCs. Again, this is the 100 watt 5881 model JCM 900. They also recommend with that three of the Electro Harmonix 12AX7s. Now I tried that exact package and didn't like it as much as the JJ regular gain, uh, I think it's the ECC83S. I did not like it as much as the JJ's. The JJ's seem to give it a little tiny bit more bottom end. Um, these, known, these amps, by the way, are seriously underrated. A lot of people think they're too trebly or too fizzy in the high gain, and um, so therefore people kind of stay away from the JCM900 and never got the love like the 800 did. If you put the right tubes in here and you have the right bias, this is one of the best sounding amps I've played. Um, I did switch the transformer, the output transformer, to a Mercury Magnetics output transformer, which sounds amazing. And I'm about to switch the input transformer also to Mercury, but um, you're going to hear the biggest difference in tone in the output transformer. So I did that one first because they're kind of expensive. Uh, but anyway, so I'm going to show you how to set this up and bias it. And the first thing you're going to need to do is to pull the amp out of the, pull the chassis out of the amp casing. So you're going to undo the four main screws. And one thing I want to mention already is when you're holding the amp and you're pulling the chassis out, do not touch anything on this amp especially underneath of it. Don't touch anything except for the main transformers. That is what you're going to use. I only grab this top transformer here. Do not, under any circumstances, touch these blue capacitors. Don't grab onto them on top or underneath. Uh, you can touch the top, but just don't. Just stay away from anything that is a capacitor like this. And by the way, when people are talking about the uh, voltages killing you or hurting you, this is what they're referring to. It's the caps, what they call the filter caps. These things can really shock the hell out of you. So just stay away from those. When I pull a chassis out of the amp casing, I grab onto this transformer and carefully slide this out and stand it upright as you see here. You'll notice I have an old cigar box sitting underneath the bottom transformer so it doesn't tip over. You want to make sure that this is very, very sturdy because if it's, if it's not sturdy and it starts to fall, your reaction is going to be to grab this thing. And if you grab this underneath, you could be in serious trouble and hurt yourself. So again, make sure it's sturdy. There's no risk of falling. 
and that nothing is you know touching it make sure you don't have wires touching just keep a nice clean safe work area and you'll be just fine the other thing I recommend is a set of electrician screwdrivers these screwdrivers are all plastic and they're meant for working around electronics um, I work on other people's amplifiers and guitars and uh, you know as well as my own so I just invested in a set of these they're not that expensive you can get them from Home Depot or um, you can even get them from Radio Shack I think this set here I got from um, uh, Harbor Freight um, but they're really really nice and um, you don't want to use metal screwdrivers or metal anything around the especially the underside of the amp uh, it can really give you some issues and shock you so these are meant for working around stuff like that but even using these you have to be very careful so the only thing that we're gonna touch with a screwdriver is the bias trim pot and uh, you're gonna need a little tiny flathead screwdriver um, to adjust the bias so the next thing that you're gonna need uh, at least the way that I do it is what's called a bias probe it's a single tube socket that's attached to a set of leads that goes into your multimeter and obviously you're gonna need a multimeter it can be uh, analog or digital I have two Radio Shack digital multimeters um, I, you don't need two you can use one but I like to uh, use one to read the plate voltage and the other one stays hooked up to the tube uh, to the bias probe so that I can just read that the entire time okay so what we're gonna have to read is what's called the plate voltage JCM 900s tend to run at about 470 and how you figure out this number is on the underside of the amp on socket one which I have my bias probe plugged into with the two plugged into it underneath of here you're gonna use pin three of the socket the power tube socket and in my case it's the very first power tube uh, right next to the last 12 AX7 if you look I'm gonna shine a flashlight under here right here this might be too bright these are marked underneath right here this is the very first let me shine this light a little bit to the side right here is the power tube socket that my uh, bias probe is plugged into we're going to use pin 3 to determine the plate voltage and how we do that is you take your multimeter and you can see I have the black lead we're going to set this to volts DC volts we have the black lead clipped with an alligator clip to the chassis you just need to ground it to the chassis and we're going to take our red lead and this is where you have to be extremely careful no kidding being underneath of this amp like this we are on both switches are fully on pin 3 is the third pin clockwise from where that key is in the uh, tube the the little notch that goes into the tube socket that puts the tube in a certain direction so we're gonna take our red lead and we're just gonna to touch it to pin 3 which is right here and that's gonna give us our plate voltage reading so if you're using one multimeter after you read your plate voltage which you saw was right around 475 476 on this particular JCM 900 the next thing you're gonna do is unhook the alligator clip or the ground that you attach to the chassis and you're gonna un uh, you're gonna plug in your bias probe leads into your multimeter and set the meter for milliamps MA and that'll get it ready to actually read our bias which is coming from that bias probe hooked to the first tube here.
Okay, so now you're going to need a calculator. I uh, have the iPad set up here with a calculator on it. And to figure out what your bias should be, you're going to need a little bit of a formula. What we're going to do, we're going to take the 30 watts that the tubes are rated at. We're going to divide it by the 475, which was the plate voltage, and that's going to give us that number. And then we're going to times that times 70% dissipation times 0.7. And that's going to give us that number right there. So our bias should be set at 44. Okay, on the underside of the chassis, you're going to see this little tiny adjustment pot. It looks like a little black box that has a little tiny white flathead adjustable screw. There are capacitors sitting right next to that and a whole bunch of other stuff around there that you do not want to touch. You're going to need a tiny plastic kind of, uh, this is an electrician screwdriver and a very, very steady hand. Now these adjustment pots are super, super touchy. So you are barely going to touch this thing and I mean barely. What you want to do is make sure that your hand is very steady and while watching your meter that's hooked up to your bias probe you're going to make a tiny adjustment. Now if you turn this clockwise from the direction I have the chassis sitting right now it's going to make the numbers go up. If you turn it to uh, counterclockwise or to the left the numbers will go down. You only need to barely barely apply pressure and this is going to move and again do not use a metal screwdriver anywhere near this and make sure your hand is very steady. So we're just going to put the end of this in here and we're going to watch our meter which is hooked up on the other side to the bias probe and that first power tube. You're going to notice these numbers move and remember our target is that number for my particular amp here. So let's watch our meter and we're going to make very fine adjustments. You can see I'm barely touching this and we're going up. Do it nice and slow. Give it time to change. Also, you want to make sure that this amp has been on and running these TAD 6L6 tubes have a tendency to fluctuate a little tiny bit um, until they're really heated up and, and kind of working. I've noticed them fluctuate from 42 to 44 to 43. Uh, after you, so you're going to want to take your bias reading after about 10 minutes and then take it again after about a good 20 minutes to see if it's still the same. If it's still the same, you're good to go. You're good to go. If not, readjust it slightly and then you're good. And that's it. That's how easy it is to adjust your bias.